You know what doesn't get enough appreciation? Video game music. And yes, I am saying that despite the almost infinite amount of appreciation it gets, but it somehow doesn't feel like enough, does it? Well, I guess it's my turn. And now, chances are, if you're watching this, you probably have some kind of appreciation for video game music. I mean, why would you click on this otherwise? And it obviously it makes sense. Music is one of the most powerful, defining features of any form of visual medium, but there really isn't enough time to go over every amazing track out there. With that being said, I'm here to talk about my favorites. You would not believe how hard it was to narrow this down. My personal list of soundtracks is currently approaching 10,000 individual songs. It's been a struggle. Also, it's common practice for this type of list to choose one entry per franchise, and you could argue that it's unfair to include more than one from your favorites, but I counter with this. Stop to consider why they're your favorite franchises. Not surprisingly, the music will play an enormous part in it, and putting a limit like that on my own list would defeat the purpose of making it. I mean, it only applies to two songs anyway, and technically they're from different things anyway, but you know what? I'm not gonna split hairs. Also, just to clarify, as a reminder, this is my list, okay? Not yours. It's mine, alright? And also, this is not a top 10 best. It's just my favorites, alright? So, no one's gonna freak out when their favorites aren't on the list, right? Can everybody be adults about this? Yeah? I think we can do it. Let's crack on. If you would have asked me before making this list if Halo would ever be on it, that would have been a no. I fell out of the series after 3, when 4 just kinda... did whatever. But Halo 2 holds a very special place in my personal library. I can't even really describe it, but despite it ultimately being a pretty typical Space Marine shooter, it was a huge part of my childhood. As I started to get older and tried new things, Halo 2 was a game changer, no pun intended, introducing me to things beyond your Marios and Zeldas to an interesting pair of stories that intertwine in a way that I hadn't seen before at the time. I remember sitting on the floor, Xbox controller in hand, staring at the TV and just listening to this song, at an age where I previously didn't appreciate music the way I would later. Unforgotten is an appropriate title. I don't think I could forget this one if I tried. Hey, who here remembers this one? Oh, the one other person that's played this game. Awesome. Legend of Dragoon is the definition of a cult classic. An RPG on the PS1 with a whopping four discs of content to plow through if you have the patience, but it's absolutely worth it. Put it this way, I have a very hard time getting into RPGs, and this one grabbed me faster than Chrono Trigger. That may not seem like much to you, but I really can't describe how much of a special game this is to me. It was my introduction to games that are so more than just, well, games. It's not even just a story, it's rather appropriately, a legend that you can experience, and this song represents that. Even with it being years since I played it last, I can still remember all the major story beats, the boss fights, the characters, and so much more. It's weird. This is normally something that I wouldn't even listen to, but it's not nostalgic, but something similar, I guess? It just, it makes me feel better, okay? Anyway, if you like what you hear, then you will love Legend of Dragoon. Now I just need to beat it someday. I should probably get on that.
Frankly, I could have put pretty much the entire Skyrim soundtrack on here, but for now, let's just keep the theme of calming melodies going. This one gets me every time. The chills, man. Even when editing this video, they still come. I've whittled away an absurd number of hours just wandering around Skyrim, exploring, questing, fighting, and sometimes literally just going for a walk. Despite its many, many flaws, this game is just beautiful. Even games that look better in pretty much every way just can't capture the same emotions because this game doesn't just present a pretty landscape, but it makes that landscape personal. I've explored every inch of this world, delved into every dungeon. This Skyrim is mine, a world I've lived in. I may have spent way more time than I can justify in it, but I don't regret that time one bit. And Far Horizons is a reminder of my adventure. I thought for a very long time about which song is the most perfectly Metroid, you know? A theme of solitude, but not loneliness. And rather appropriately, I found it hidden away in an unexpected place, in one of the games I've played the least, Metroid Prime 3 Corruption. Despite how little time I've spent with Corruption, and it being the first song you hear before even starting the game, this one took me by surprise, but I also couldn't think of a song that so perfectly matches my favorite series. Even though I've only actually heard it in-game a few times, I feel like I've heard it hundreds more, but not in a bad, repetitive way. More like, it feels familiar. It certainly helps that it's a gorgeous song to boot. If there was ever a song that embodied one of Nintendo's best but most forgotten series, this would be it. In a way, it kind of fits that. Metroid is all about exploring abandoned places, rediscovering incredible things, and realizing the power of an individual. It's a tough life of solitude our hero leads, and as far as I care, this is her theme. There's a theme of nostalgia running through this list, and you probably noticed. The songs, and by extension, games, I remember most are the ones that somehow influenced my develop as a gamer. I mentioned in a previous entry that there was a point where I expanded my library of games into new territory, but that doesn't mean I forgot where I came from. People will always talk about Ocarina of Time or Link to the Past, but my favorite Zelda game, and possibly my favorite game ever, is Majora's Mask. What can I say about it? Well, a lot, but we don't have time for that right now. Trust me, there's a lot to get through, so I'll summarize. The story of Majora's Mask is about falling down to rock bottom and losing everything. Friends, companions, abilities, possessions, everything is taken away at a moment's notice. Left with nothing and stuck in a nearly useless body, they suddenly saddle you with a quest to complete before three days end. And it's only as time runs out that you realize how much is at stake. One short but incredibly in-depth adventure later, it's time to bring it all together. It's been many cycles of the same three days, played over and over again until you're finally ready to overcome the last challenge. Four dungeons cleared, four giants to call. So play the Oath to Order. It may sound unremarkable at first, and I suppose it kind of is when you just listen to it by itself, but putting it in the context of having just finished a decently lengthy RPG, 
and only minutes after a very emotional goodbye, coupled with it being a great medley of themes from throughout the whole adventure, it's a fantastic send-off to an amazing game. Mario RPG took an idea that made no sense and could have easily failed and possibly killed the future of entire spin-off series. Instead, they created one of the most unique games Nintendo has ever released. Even spiritual successors that came later still did their own things. They didn't even try to compete with Mario RPG, and for good reason. It stands in a league of its own, and this song is everything the game has to offer, distilled into a few minutes. Oh god, here we go. Not even gonna hide it, guys. I cry every time. I stopped trying not to years ago, and you know why? Because Mario RPG is beautiful, okay? And this song represents that. It's a song from a time long past that part of me wishes could come back. But you just have to move forward. Good things end, but they don't disappear. You'll always have them, and the memories you created with them. People may say it's silly to get so invested in a goofy RPG from decades ago, but that's not the point I'm trying to make. It's not about a game. It's about the adventure you had, the people you met, the lives you changed, and whether or not you can look back and say, I had fun. That's Mario RPG, Legend of the Seven Stars. Oh look, it's Undertale! Are we still at the point where even mentioning it will make people tell me to kill myself? How about if you were planning to do that, you just go somewhere else for a little while? How does that sound? Everybody with a brain still here? Good. Let's get right to it! There's a lot I could try to say about this song, but I couldn't possibly do it justice. It needs the context of the entire game to reveal its true effectiveness, and that's part of the brilliance of Undertale. The music is so intricately woven into the narrative that the songs themselves are part of it. I seriously have no words for this one. It really does need to be experienced properly. I know it's kind of weird to have nothing to say here, considering how I rambled on about the previous entries and their personal meaning to me, but Undertale really is different. It holds the meaning you give to it more than any other game I've seen, existing in almost a vacuum of space that only it can occupy. That doesn't make it an untouchable masterpiece by any means, nothing is truly perfect. But to find an experience that resonates with you on such a personal level is so rare, and to have it culminate into something that matters, that you can really care about, that is hopes and dreams. I mean, say what you want, but this guy knows his theming. I just want to let this song play now, it's just so good. Can I? Uh, I probably can't. Okay, let's just move on then, fine. Not allowed to have any fun with these videos, am I? Well, time to break the rules. I remember seeing this game for the first time during E3 and thinking, what the hell am I looking at? Yeah, I was kind of a curmudgeon about Hyrule Warriors early on. A purist, if you will, confused as to why such a weird spin-off would even happen. Fortunately, over time, I realized the error of my ways and accepted Zelda in all its forms, including a sort of crossover with a series I had never played before. Eventually, Hyrule Warriors became one of my favorite games, as a mind-blowingly exciting challenge. When I really started diving into adventure mode and was getting the hang of things, I noticed that the other players were getting ahead of me by quite a wide margin. 
One day, a player appeared at level 150, which was the max at the time. Link, my highest level character, was around 75. I felt a rare confidence seeing such a difference between the two, like it was a personal challenge to me. For those that aren't aware, in Adventure Mode, you could come across other players who are currently playing a level, and if you go into that level yourself, then you're faced with a new challenge, based on the level of the other player. It's also important to note that I hadn't finished the main story at this point, so not only had I never seen the last stage, but I also hadn't heard the music. I just dove in, and I was not ready for what came next. Before this, the game was a bit tough, but still kind of quirky and fun. Starting this stage for the first time, however, everything had changed. Riding upon across the destroyed Hyrule field, enemies unrelenting and almost unkillable, being completely unprepared for what I was about to experience. What do you do when presented with immovable objects? Power through them? Go around? Give up? Hell, I didn't know. All I knew was that this was the real deal, the battle I always wanted. As far as I care, this might as well be the new theme for Zelda. It's a song that embodies everything that Hyrule Warriors is. It's not your typical fighting game. This isn't just a battle, a one-on-one -on -one with the final boss, with the fate of the world, or whatever hanging in the balance. This is a war. Everyone is out there, fighting for their lives, larger-than-life characters desperate to save everything they care about in the face of seemingly impossible odds, thousands against a few. Well, what are you waiting for? Save the world. Discussing this game is kind of necessary for this entry to make sense. By itself, it's undeniably a great and memorable song, but it's defined by its use in-game. This is the theme for when you've cracked the case, the lies are falling apart, and you're taking another step toward discovering the truth. Now, I'm gonna be spoiling the crap out of the first game here, which I was hoping to avoid doing, but this has to be done properly to give it the full effect. So, imagine you've spent several hours fighting against liars and criminals, the type of people that do anything just to manipulate and serve themselves. It's been a grueling slog that seemed impossible, but you've overcome every challenge. You saved your best friend, kept an innocent man out of jail, exposed an enormous cover-up of blackmail and murder, single-handedly took down one of the most powerful and dangerous people in the world, befriended your enemy to put to rest fears that he killed his own father, all while risking everything you have left to risk. After all, you already lost one of the only things you had to begin with. The villains are behind bars, and everyone is happy. But we're not done yet. There's one more case. How bad could it be? The final case, added in the original Phoenix Wright Games DS port, is an unrelenting marathon. It drains everything you have, going on for what feels like forever, slowly working your way through a network of lies and fake evidence, grasping at anything to try to hold on to the possibility that your client is innocent, despite everything and almost everyone saying otherwise, including the defendant herself. Witness after witness, testimonies going on for ages, picking them all apart one by one, it's excruciating, but good 
god is it rewarding. Eventually, and I do mean eventually, in a case that goes on for longer than all the previous ones combined, you find yourself up against one of the most diabolical characters in the series, Damon Gant. Which I would normally call a spoiler, but he's pretty much the most obvious villain to ever exist, so it hardly even counts. Regardless, he's such a prolific villain because he's prepared for almost every conceivable outcome, and not only do you have nothing to use against him, he isn't afraid to fight disgustingly dirty. It's clear in his actions, hiding evidence, manipulating everyone around him, blackmailing good people, killing others, and possibly more that we don't even know about. He's so confident that he doesn't even bother hiding his true intentions from you. A man so powerful that the one person capable of taking him down doesn't even try, out of fear of what would happen to the only family she has left. Multiple lives are on the case. Detective Gumshoe would lose his job. Jake Marshall would be lucky to get life in prison. Edgeworth would resign out of shame from being manipulated for years. Bruce Goodman would have died for nothing. The defendant, Lana, would go to prison for a crime she didn't commit. Her sister and your partner, Emma, a minor, would be charged with first-degree murder. And you, Phoenix Wright? Well, losing your job would be the best possible outcome. At worst, you'd be lucky to ever get out of prison. Worst of all, he would get off scot-free. All these lives, ruined in one fell swoop, Sure, you could have left well enough alone and let everyone continue down the paths they'd chosen for themselves, or were forced on them, either ignorant or complacent to everything going on around them. Instead, you went up against impossible odds, against someone that seemed completely and utterly untouchable. None of them, not even you, believed it could be done. You were doomed to fail, and in some respects, already had failed. And then... you beat him. One word describes this song. Victory. I have never heard a song before or since that could possibly rival Corner as the ultimate theme of triumph. And the devs proved they knew exactly the bottled lightning they had. Normally, you'll hear it a couple times each case, sometimes even as a joke. But with the very last case, they hold off for the multiple hours it takes to get through, holding off until the very last possible moment when a single decision would either lead to success or destroy everything you've been working for. But you made it. The lies unraveled, the secrets came out, and everyone is better for it. This song shows how much power a person can have to change the world around them. It's a theme that says, everyone said I couldn't, but I did. And that idea means a lot to me. So much failure occurs just because someone gave up or felt defeated for reasons that seem beyond their control. But even if it seems impossible, the chance is still there. The chance that it might work. The chance that you can prove them and yourself wrong. Now that we've reached number one, it's time that we take a moment to pause, reflect, and mourn the fallen. Which is just another way of saying that we're gonna look at some honorable mentions. And trust me, there are a lot of these things, but I didn't really want to just ignore them all since they're all really good songs that deserve your appreciation and time in their own right. So I didn't want to just gloss over them or not mention them at all. So we're just going to go through a quick little list of those. Also, you've probably noticed, and are definitely going to notice, that a majority of these songs are from Nintendo games. And there's a good reason for that. Nintendo makes better music. And thus, we must move on because we literally only have a few seconds for each of these, so lightning round!
guess what? I'm breaking the rules again. Sometimes it's very difficult to put things into words. People that don't play games really can't understand how much an experience can impact you. Sometimes it can be so hard to explain or even understand yourself just how much it means to you. Nothing could hope to compare to The Legend of Zelda in that regard. It's kind of funny. I wound up rewriting a good chunk of this list not long before posting it. Served me right for making a video about music right before a new Zelda game comes out, huh? If this game has a central theme, it would be memory. Breath of the Wild is about your personal relationships and doing everything you can to remember them. With a series that's been going as long as Zelda has, it can sometimes feel like you're going through the motions. Sure, every new iteration is unique in its own way, but each new version still feels like the previous one. It really is like having amnesia and having to relearn everything you once knew in order to save the world, but this time, it's different. There's something I want to say about this song, but I can't figure out what it is. I've been staring at the script for so long, but it's just not coming to me. it. Hearing this for the first time was like being reminded of everything I had done so far. Not just in Breath of the Wild, but in the whole series. Every moment of inspiration, determination, joy, sadness, anger, and pure adventure all at once. This was the first time I ever actually felt like Link. Like there was a personal investment in succeeding. I just needed to be reminded of what that was. Decades, literal decades, of memories came back to make sure I knew why I was there. I'm not just saving the world or the princess because someone told me to. I want to be here because I'm fighting for something that matters to me. And I'll be damned if I let anything get in my way. <laughs>